Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. Well, we continue our series on health care and consumerism in health care. We've done some other shows dealing with that topic. Uh, but first, after we return, we're going to hear from Mike Love, the president of the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, for a quick energy update after these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, first off today, we're going to start with uh, an energy update with our friend Mike Love. Mike is president of the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, a frequent guest on the program. Now, Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, Terry. It's great to be here. Now, I'm going to have to kid you. We had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, and you talked a little bit here about $3 a gallon for gasoline. Now, I'm sure we're all happy. It's not at $3 a gallon, right? But what happened? Well, I, I was uh, incorrect uh, in predicting that we would be at $3 because I thought that we would not keep the pace of conservation that we had mm -hmm. that led to the prices being suppressed in the, in the so past. So let me get this straight. You think that we're, we didn't use as much energy... Uh, particularly energy produced from petroleum. In as the, I thought we might. As you thought we might. Now, is that because the consumers are doing a better job of conservation or we got, we've had you know, pretty mild winter or, and we didn't have a brutally hot summer? What's, what's the story? Well, I think that people did adjust somewhat. The, 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 I am still concerned because I think, as you know, Terry, uh, gasoline prices have gone up 10 cents in the last week. Mm -hmm. And that's how the process begins. And so when you look at the supply and demand, um, people are again starting to ease their habits and pushing down on that throttle. Right. And so I am concerned still. Right. And I think we will ultimately get back to the $3, sadly, because we still are not taking energy efficiency right. and energy conservation seriously. Okay, I want to talk about uh, 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 th this LIHEAP program. You and I have talked about it before, which is uh, energy, uh, which is a, a program, a, a sta actually a state federal program that provides money for uh, heating assistance to the poor. How does that stand in the state? We've, you've reviewed this before. Refresh my memory. Last year, we had a, a, a record amount of dollars that came from the federal government and for the first time, dollars from the state. The state right. Sadly, again, just as I was talking about how we forget our lessons of the past on energy conservation in terms of gasoline, um, because we got a record amount of dollars from the federal government, knowing full well they were going to cut back this year, mm -hmm. and we got state dollars, we have now removed our commitment on the state level and we have not gotten the dollars from the federal level. So the result's going to be that people are not going to have the amount of dollars they've had in prior years. And so if they haven't applied for aid, they should do so quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that may be of even greater consequence is because of the unwillingness of both Congress and our government here in the state to step up to the LIHEAP issue, I think it makes it all the more important to try to use everything you can to reduce your usage. Right. And one very effective thing that I have to give uh, now Senator Casey credit for is he started the Keystone Loan Program, right. which is a low-cost program that's eligible for everybody, not just low income, but anybody that's out in your audience. And that, which you can find by going on to his website, uh, the Treasury's, Treasury's web website, website right. is an ability to get very low-cost loans to do mm -hmm. major repairs to your homes. Because while energy prices, thankfully, as you said before, are down, and thankfully we have not seen the winter that was predicted by uh, the Farmers' Almanac, um, we have seen that energy prices do rebound. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want your viewers to be caught short, okay. and I want Good. them to be taking steps. Okay, well, let me uh, ask you uh, continue on this just for one moment. Is there any prospect that additional monies will, will come forward from either the federal government or the state government? You think those issues for this year are pretty well resolved? Well, for, for, for 2006, yes. But for the latter part of the 2006-2007 winter heating season, right. 
I, as an energy professional, have got to say to you that I'm going to be trying to press our case okay. and work with the consumer advocates to press their case okay. because we cannot be this insensitive as mm -hmm. a growing society. All right, let's talk a little bit about what the state is doing, you know, in the federal government in terms of the energy in infrastructure improvement and uh, where you think we're heading with this whole business of trying to produce alternative fuels versus conservation. W what's the situation there right now? Well, I think that... Um if you probably asked any person on the street, they would say that they want to have alternative energy, and, right. and, and rightfully so. The problem, and Governor Rendell actually hit on it in some comments he made earlier this week, talking about the fact is there are a bunch of projects that right now are being held up by the federal government's inability to get financing out to these folks to build the units. And mm -hmm. thus, you can pass laws like we did in the state that you know say we as utilities are to buy as many alternative energy as we can, uh, we're to get credits, et cetera, et cetera. But if it's not there to buy, right. what can you do? So the point being is we've entered that world where we've said, all right, this is the course we want to channel. This is where we want to go. But what we have to find out is how well we implement. Right. And that's going to be a challenge because that's going to mean people have to think outside the box. All right. The last question I have, can, let, we dealt with uh, oil prices. Let's talk about natural gas and electric prices. Up, down? Uh, natural gas prices, fortunately, have gone down about, on average, 25% from where they were last winter. Okay. So that's a significant reduction. Right. So people should see a significant reduction in their bill. Um, electric prices in some parts of the state have gone up. Uh, most parts of the state are still under the rate caps, and so they are not moving up. Right. But the point I would say is whether right now the situation is good as it is in natural gas and gasoline or a little hazy if it is in electric, the important thing is people have got to take ownership right. of their own energy usage, and they have to take steps to be better conserving. All right, Mike, thank you as always. Uh, a great uh, update, energy update. When we come back, we're going to turn to uh, consumerism in, in health care. It's a topic that we've actually considered on a number of previous shows. We're going to hear from uh, our friends at Highmark. We're going to get into some aspects of, this, uh, of that subject uh, after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities. The state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania and by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. As I indicated earlier, we've been doing this consumerism in uh, health care now for a, a, a couple of months, and uh, we're going to have uh, an update from uh, our friends at Highmark, and joining me is Dr. Robert Mascalis, who is Highmark uh, Medical Director, Kim Ballard, who is Vice President of E-Marketing and Customer Relationship Management, and Regina Campo, who is the Human Resources Director at Gettysburg uh, uh, College. Uh, uh, Dr. Mascalis, let's start with you. Uh, you know, by the way, you were on when you were uh, Surgeon General, right? Physician General. I always I used to kid you and call you. Remember that That's Surgeon right. General That's right. position? That's the equivalent position in the state. At any rate, we are seeing a much more renewed interest in the consumer playing a more important role in their own health care. Uh, we did some programs earlier in the fall, you know, emphasizing what consumers uh, should be doing. Give us an overview of that for our uh, viewers. Okay. Well, well, first of all, as you said, consumerism is really having individuals becoming more involved in their health care. Well, what does that mean? It, it means that in order for them to be more engaged, uh, in order to make better decisions, they need access to information, a lot of different mm -hmm. kinds of information. For example, it has to be accurate. It has to be information that can be usable so that they can make informed decisions. They may have questions about quality issues related right. to a hospital right. or a doctor, or it may be as simple as better understanding what some of their health risks are based upon their family history, their age, or existing medical conditions, and then having information that they can use right. to address whatever risks they have so that they can live longer, healthier mm -hmm. lives. Regina, now, f from your level, like at Franklin and Marshall College, where I am, we're constantly getting updates 
you know, from our folks in human resources about differing health programs and what, what, what is it that you do particularly to inform, for example, the, you know, the staff at, at Gettysburg? Uh, what is it you specifically do that relates to uh, Dr. Mascalis's point? Well, one of the things that we began um, several years ago when we were looking at increases in health premiums of 20 to 30 percent was a wellness committee. Mm -hmm. And our wellness committee began programming that we offer to our employees. And we take advantage of Highmark services. They offer courses where they will provide the instructor's manuals, PowerPoints, and participant guides. And we offer those kinds of programs to our employees on various topics, mm -hmm. um, such as eat well for life, right. relaxation. Uh, we've realized that unless we do something about the utilization, we won't be able to contain those costs right. in the future. And we all would like to make sure that our premiums are manageable. And I think we've had great participation yeah. with that by informing people how important it is to be aware yeah. of that. Let me, let me, let's, let's talk about another aspect of this, Kim. Uh, obviously, the Internet has made a huge difference. I know that whenever uh, someone in my family has a health care problem, my wife is into a whole bunch of websites, you know, where she'll quickly get on, you get, you know, the diagnosis, you get uh, the, the, the general treatment that's prescribed. Uh, I, I guess that's a good idea as long as we don't start playing doctor. <laughs> but, but how is it that you all, well, first of all, talk a little bit in general about the Internet and how it, it can be helpful here. Well, it really has changed the dynamic. Uh, the, the Pew Foundation did a study that there's only over 93 million health seekers of information on the internet, which is you know, most of the adult population. And half of those people say that they would go to the internet first for mm -hmm. health information. So it's really giving them access to a lot more information that will help them become a participant in their health care, talking to their doctor about what their options are, why their options might be right. particularly good for them. So we try to make sure that we've got a, a wide array of credible information so that they're not searching all the strange sites out, sure. in the, out there, that they go to their doctor, it's information that is clinically uh, verified, and can, they can have a reasonable discussion with their physician about what the best course of action for yeah. them is. Now, I'm sure there's a, we're going to go to a break now, but when we come back, there have, obviously is a downside to this. I mean, and it's a serious downside if patients start to think they're physicians. I know you're smiling here. I mean, that's obviously not what we want. When we come back, we're going to talk about that and some other aspects of uh, health care uh, after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Pennsylvania Medical Society. Doctors and patients preserve the relationship. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. We're talking about consumerism and health care, a topic that we've taken up over the last couple of months on, months on Pennsylvania Newsmakers. All right, look, I want to get into this. The Internet has its obviously positive sides. There is some downside to it, particularly if people start playing doctor and you know, prescribing their own condition. Tell, Listen, there is a lot of really good information on the Internet about health care topics. The problem is, among that information is other information that might not be quite so good. So what right. we're doing by utilizing Highmark's website and having our members go through our portal okay. is making sure they have access to current, accurate information and then use that mm -hmm. information to discuss with their physicians right. how they can use that for specific right. health care needs. And most things aren't black and white. You know, there, there are many options available to consumers, some of which have different consequences. It's really trying to educate the consumer about what their options are, what those options may, might mean for them, and they can then go to mm -hmm. the uh, physician mm -hmm. and talk about how that fits in with their lifestyle, with their preferences, all that kind of stuff. Sure. And I think sometimes when you are diagnosed with a condition and your physician has brought that news to you, you're sometimes stunned and have no idea what questions you should ask. So you can go home, do a little research yourself online. You can make a phone call to Blues on Call. Um, those nurses there can give you some advice. And then you say, let me go back to my doctor. I'm better informed. I'm a little calmer. Mm -hmm. And let's make decisions now. Yeah. Terry, one other point. There's a, also a change in culture here. Uh, your parents, yep. my parents, yep. uh, represent a generation that would probably not question their physician. And so we're seeing a change now where people are getting more information and they're asking a lot of what I think are really good questions sure. about all of the options available for specific needs. And I think doctors are becoming more accustomed to that. I mean, the training... 
the way tr doctors are trained now, I mean, they clearly understand. I mean, we have lots of physicians on the show talking about different aspects of their practices. And I do think there's a growing realization in the medical community that the consumer is going to play a, mo a more important role. And, and the information is not just about when they're getting care. We, we think of three buckets of information. One is when they're choosing their health plan, yeah. you know, how to pick the plans best for them, when they're getting care, but also when they're making lifestyle choices. Are they doing the things that yeah. they can do to improve their health, to take active courses, right. to do wellness kind of activities? Now, you notice that uh, Governor Rendell has proposed, uh, he wants to get into a different so different considerations of how health care is delivered, and particularly he's, he, he's concerned about results and preventative care, and, and I think he's going to try to shift some, uh, uh, some of the focus uh, in terms of how, uh, uh, in terms of the coverage. Now, that sort of goes along with what you're saying. The more we can do to learn about health care now, the more uh, preventative things like yes. the wellness programs, the better off we're going to be. That's exactly what we're trying to encourage at Gettysburg College, participation in our wellness program. And we've given them lots of different options. We started out with a points track where you were very confined. You had to uh, attend certain things. And now we've um, come to a point where we're offering them what's called an independent wellness track. Right. So we take people where they are. Right. Someone might not need help with their physical health because they're already doing five right. miles a day. But they might need some help with their stress management and so we've given them those kinds of options through our wellness program. Well, one of the things that's sort of fascinating is that we know that if people, you know, can see a physician uh, regularly, does the wellness stuff, as Regina points out, that in the long run that's less expensive for the whole health care system, right? Then, you know, suddenly waiting until a problem gets aggravated, you don't see a physician on a regular basis, and then you learn that you've got a serious health care problem that A is more difficult to manage, more difficult to treat, and also ends up costing all of us a lot more money because ultimately, you know, the taxpayer is picking up a lot of the cost for lots of health care and as well as private employers. Sure. At one time, health insurance covered only those accidents or major problems that developed. Yeah. Now we're looking at a process where the coverage is encouraging individuals yep. to receive preventive care yep. so that they can either yep. avoid altogether or certainly delay the development of certain conditions. And along with that, we're developing products and programs that actually encourage, incent, and right. motivate employees to make changes in their lifestyle so that they can get better control of chronic conditions that can become yep. more serious later on. All right, when we come back uh, from a break, we're going to continue with this topic. Uh, this is a great. This is great stuff out there, and it's important. And you know, we're going to continue with uh, our discussion of consumerism and health healthcare uh, activities uh, following these messages. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Health Care Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Builders Association. Building today for a better tomorrow. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program, Consumerism and Healthcare. All right, I want to, I want to turn to a subject of, of this business of transparency. It seems that the entire healthcare industry, I hate the industry, healthcare delivery system, now is doing much more with transparency. Yeah, when, when you give consumers more responsibility for their costs, they're going to, like any other product, they're going to want to know, what am I buying? What right. is the cost of what I'm buying? Are the quality of, of the services I'm buying the same? So how do you give them that right amount of information? We have a program at Gettysburg College supported by Highmark called a multiphasic blood screening and health risk assessment. So at the beginning and the end of each wellness year, everyone is encouraged to participate. In fact, we just had 355 members participate in the past two months. And they get information from that that tells them about their cholesterol, their glucose. It has cited things that uh, pointed to cancer for people. We also offer PSAs at that time. So once the consumer gets that information, what do they do with it? And they want to know who is the best person I can go to to mm -hmm. get the care I need to have a great quality of life. 
And so they can look to that information yeah. you're providing. So, so part of it would be to look at, you know, what are their options? Why might I do it? If, do, do I need surgery for this? Are there chemical treatments? That kind of thing. So they can, they can call us. They can use our website for that. But if they are going to choose to get a treatment, they can look at, you know, who does the most of these kind of procedures? What are their outcomes of, of those kind of procedures? What's the uh, infection rates, mortality rates, yeah. all that? I think it's important to point out a couple of things. <clears throat> First, we never, ever want to... Uh, get between any patient and their physician. Mm -hmm. We always want to supplement that information. Second, we never want to uh, s uh, persuade someone one way or the other regarding what they ultimately decide. But what we want to do is make sure that our members have a good understanding of all of the options that are available to them. We know that there are geographic variations right. in healthcare delivery, right. and we think it's important for individuals to know what all of those options are so that they can make an informed decision mm -hmm. and discuss it with their physician. Give them the facts and let them make the decisions that are yeah, right I mean, for them. I mean, a key element, it seems to me, is once you learn that you might potentially have a problem, I mean, getting the information is one thing. Doing something about it is entirely another matter. And what you're suggesting here is that uh, there are ways to find out what to do about it and how to proceed. Uh, typically, wouldn't we go to our family doctor and a family doctor would say, well, you need to go see a specialist here or a specialist there. But what you're saying is that this gives you a wide variety of options, including... Right. Well, what we're, we're not saying don't do those oh, things. Oh, sure. We, we want our, our, our members to see their physicians. This is another tool available to them so that they can get additional information and discuss it with their physicians to make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Your doctor might say, I'd like to go to this specialist to have knee surgery, for example. And you might look on the website and say, you know, that guy's only done 10 of those in the last year, whereas right. this guy's done, you know, 100 of them. Right. I might want to go to him or th to a particular hospital. So, again, what, what are the places that have done the kinds of things you've done, have a good track record on them, to help you make a decision in, in concert with your physician about what the best course of action is? Yeah, uh, you, you know, this com I mean, in conclusion, uh, this program, is this program unique? I mean, are other... Every, every health insurer is trying to figure out what the right mix is. So everyone is pushing very rapidly, as is Medicare, right. to get the right information out. I think what makes it unique is what value-added information we can provide, yeah. given all the sophisticated data, sure. amount of money that we have, and so on. Sure, you wanted to say... I, I feel like Heimark has really supported us in, right. in being able to give information to, we have a very well-educated community at Gettysburg College, and they want more information, and yeah. Heimark has been able to help yeah. us with that. And clearly, making, public, making information available to the public uh, is something we take very serious, which is why we want to make sure any information we have is accurate, objective, especially okay. if people are going to come back. Dr. Miscalis has the last word. See you next week with another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and stay well.